Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. And these workshops and exercises are published to our website, aws-dozo.com, and you can implement the scenarios in those workshops and exercises uh, to learn about AWS services. Today, I'm going to talk about a very simple topic that is how to integrate uh, SageMaker, AWS SageMaker Notebook with AWS Code Commit. But let's get introduction about these services first. So uh, Amazon SageMaker Notebook is uh, a uh, machine learning enabled EC2 instance, uh, which runs Jupyter Notebook app. And Different people can use this Jupyter Notebook app for different types of develop, uh, development. So two of the um, largest community who use Jupyter Notebook app are data scientists and data engineers. And data scientists use Jupyter Notebook app uh, for all machine learning related uh, tasks like preparing your data, training and testing your models and deploying your models. However, data engineers use it for um, um, kind of different set of operations. Generally, they try to create different types of uh, glue jobs, and these glue jobs could be for the ETL purpose or uh, processing your data uh, or cleansing your data. And these glue jobs then uh, work with uh, other services like lake formation and AWS glue and work with data catalog to fetch data and write data back. So generally, these are two different set of uh, user groups or people who use Jupyter Notebook for their own set of development. These guys work in team, and when you're working in a team, it is very important that uh, you collaborate with each other so that you can uh, you can share your work, you can, uh, you can, um, uh, you can uh, work as a team where uh, yeah, someone else work, you can continue or, or, or vice versa. Um, so when you're trying to collaborate, uh, having a source code repository becomes very important, which can be used as a common place where all these data engineers and science, scientists you know, work from. And that's where your AWS code commits comes into the picture, which is a Git-based Git um, um, uh, source control repositories, uh, which um, help teams uh, of data scientists, engineers uh, to collaborate um, uh, on their code in a secure and scalable, uh, scalable way. So today I'm going to talk about how you can use AWS code commit with SageMaker Notebook. Uh, but what I'm going to show is very much relevant for integrating any Git-based Git repository with Amazon SageMaker Notebook. So let's see how the integration works. Uh, so first thing is you go, um, you create a code commit repository, uh, and and uh, yeah, you you commit, uh, you create the repository, and once you have created the repository, uh, you can go to SageMaker service and uh, and and add this repository. So you can add more than one repository into your SageMaker, uh, SageMaker service uh, so that uh, SageMaker notebooks running under SageMaker service uh, can work on one or more repository as their need be. So once you have added the repository, uh, then uh, you actually create a SageMaker role uh, which gives, uh, no, which has access to code commit repository. So what we are going to do, so, so basically, basically it's, it's an IAM role, um, uh, which is trusted by uh, you know, SageMaker, uh, uh, SageMaker uh, service, and this has access to code commit repository. Now this access, you can further restrict whether you want to give access only for the pull, or you, access, uh, you give access for the push as well, for creating branch as well, and those kind of things. But you can define your, uh, your own access, but basically you create an IAM role which will have access to code commit repository. Then you launch a SageMaker notebook uh, where you say uh, which uh, repositories this uh, SageMaker notebook will have um, uh, no, no, uh, we'll configure with, and then you also associate the role you created in the step number three. 
And when you do that, actually you are all all set because then this SageMaker notebook will use this uh, role-based authorization to talk to the repositories and and perform the actions like um, you know, um, uh, pushing the code or pulling the code or creating the branch and, uh, and so forward. Um, now this uh, repository which you have configured, you can either use with uh, you no know, Jupyter Notebook or you can also use with Jupyter uh, Lab. Okay, so it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you set up the repository, you uh, la launch a SageMaker notebook which is configured with the repository, and it has uh, a role association which uh, and a role gives it authorizations to talk to the code commit repository, and then you're all good and set to go. Now, when you're using uh, Jupyter, uh, especially when you're using Jupyter Lab, um, actually uh, you can work with a uh, code commit repository uh, in two ways. One, you can use a GUI where you can perform all the operation of uh, tracking your changes to your Putting the no, uh, no putting your commit, uh, pulling your uh, pulling your uh, code, pushing your code, everything you can do through uh, even 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 managing your branches, all those operations you can perform through a, a, a GUI. But if you like to work through uh, no Git commands and you want to use terminal window, uh, you can also use a terminal window with Jupyter Note Jupyter Lab. Uh, no, when when working on uh, SageMaker uh, notebook. So uh, this is the scenario I'm going to show you. Again, I told you it's going to be a very simple scenario, but uh, I think it's uh, worth knowing. Uh, okay, so for this uh, scenario, uh, uh, for this integration, we have created an exercise. Uh, the URL of the exercise has also been provided to the in the description box below. I'm going to show you the steps of the exercise, and then after that, you can use this URL to access this uh, uh, exercise and perform uh, the task uh, perform the task to you know to implement this whole integration end to end. So let's jump on to uh, the exercise. So here is the here is the exercise which is published to our website aws-dozo.com. Um, and then if you, these are the steps you have to perform uh, to complete uh, the exercise. Uh, so step number one is uh, very simple. You need to have an AWS account in order to perform uh, this exercise. And if you don't have an AWS account, then you might want to use this link to create uh, a trial account. Then uh, we uh, log into AWS uh, console, uh, and then we, we choose Ireland as a region uh, for this exercise, but you can choose any other region where uh, SageMaker Notebook and Code Commit is available. So uh, first we'll go to the IAM console and create a role. So this is where I'm creating a role which is used by SageMaker Notebook. Um, and, and then this role will provide SageMaker Notebook uh, authorizations to talk to AWS code commit. So uh, I was simply creating a new role and this role is for SageMaker service. Uh, and then uh, we, we are giving this a name called uh, Dojo SageMaker role. And by default, this role has, uh, has full access to SageMaker, AWS, Amazon SageMaker. Now, um, this is not sufficient uh, because we also need to provide it uh, access to the code commit. Uh, well, in this case, uh, we are giving it uh, really a big uh, policy here saying that, okay, you have uh, full access to the code commit, but um, in actual production environment, you might want to restrict this uh, role-based access to only uh, certain code repositories uh, and that too for certain operations which you want to restrict to, okay? So for instance, you want to give uh, push and pull uh, access, but not creating the branch. I mean, up to you how you want to implement it. But for now, this, for this exercise, we have given this uh, the full access. So now our role is ready. Next step is to go and launch a code commit repository. So we go to the um, uh, code commit uh, console and we click on creating a new repository. Uh, and then, um, yeah, sometimes I don't like these ads. Uh, and then uh, you go next and uh, you put uh, this repository name called Dozo Repo uh, and then simply click on the create button and it will simply uh, create the repository for you. So once you have uh, created the repository, you can go and configure this repository to SageMaker service. So go to the SageMaker uh, console, and on the left-hand side, you will see a menu called Git Repositories. 
And here you click on uh, yeah, that menu option. Then you have add repository uh, button. You click on that. And this is where you can configure your repository. So in this case, I'm choosing this uh, code commit. Uh, this is an existing repository. I select as uh, no, Dozo repo as a, as a repository which we created earlier. And then it says, okay, what is the SageMaker name for it? And I gave the same name as uh, the actual repository name. But you can give a different name if you want. Again, I'm showing this demo for code commit, but um, you can very well use it for other GitHub or Git-based repository the same way. So you added the repository, and similarly, you can add more than one repository if you if your SageMaker uh, users uh, work with more than one repository here. Then you launch a SageMaker notebook instance. So we go to the notebook instances uh, and say, I want to create a new notebook instance. Uh, give this uh, notebook instance a name called Dozo Notebook. Uh, and then uh, uh, we give this permission Dozo SageMaker role. Uh, we need to give this uh, role, uh, configure this role over here, uh, which we created earlier because we want to authorize uh, this notebook to have access to the code repository. Then we go to one of the optional configuration section called Git repository. And here you can see there is a Dezo, uh, no, Dezo repo. Um, oh, okay, that's a misspell here. But yeah, Dezo repo uh, repository uh, created over here. So we simply uh, yeah select that and we simply say okay I'm I'm, I'm creating uh, um, I create a new notebook instance. So when I create a notebook instance like this, then this notebook instance will be created with uh, this code commit repository already configured for it. So let's wait till uh, the notebook instance had been launched and the status changes to in service. At this point of time, you can uh, now access uh, your your repository either either from your open uh, from the Jupyter. A notebook, or you can use Jupyter Lab, and I like Jupyter Lab more because it seems more collaborative um, environment uh, for me to work, uh, uh, like uh, no uh, other fancy IDs. So uh, I click on this Jupyter, uh, you know, open Jupyter Lab, and when you open it, uh, and your Jupyter Lab will open, you can see that your uh, your uh, your repository is is already already uh, configured, uh, and then um, what you do is uh, you can See on the left hand side there is a Git menu. Uh, when you click on that, you will sign. Uh, you will find all uh, the options over here to work with Git repository. So literally, you have options to manage your branches. You can you can track your changes. Uh, you can add uh, add um, um, uh, comments for the commit. Uh, you can push it. You can pull it. You can you can you know, perform all those operations through the UI. Now, many of the guys who prefer to work with uh, Git commands in place of GUI, for them, they can go to this Git menu over here and say, I want to open the Git repository in terminal. And when you do so, uh, you get, you're given a terminal window where you can go and you know, run those Git push, pull, and commit commands or add command to track your changes and, and perform the operation. Um, and that's it, guys. I told you it's going to be very uh, simple and straightforward uh, um, um, demo to show you how you can use um, Jupyter Notebook as uh, an uh, editor uh, for development, especially for data engineers and scientists, and how this Jupyter Notebook uh, then uh, can integrate with uh, your uh, your uh, uh, code, uh, your your repository, whether it's a code commit repository or Git repository, uh, to give you a, a collaborative development environment. The last step to go and clean up some of the resources you created so that you don't incur any cost post uh, this uh, exercise. So that was all for today, guys. I uh, hope you liked the video, and if you like, please click on the like button. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any feedback or comments, uh, please do provide that um, uh, either in the comment section in the YouTube channel, or you can also click on this contact us tab and, and provide us feedback uh, there. So I look forward to your feedback. Um, there are many other workshop and exercises similar to this one, uh, which you can use to learn about AWS services. Uh, yeah, please feel free to explore that on our website, aws-dozo.com. And uh, that's all for uh, today. I promise to come back again with a new exercise or workshop in the coming days. Uh, in the meanwhile, 
have a nice day and best of luck bye bye